Hey folks, Phil the Bee Man here. I've had quite a few questions about my indoor wintering and so I thought I would uh, show you a few things about uh, how I do that. Uh, I'm standing in front of my wintering barn where uh, this is my original uh, facility. I had about, I think about 600 hives in here last year. I do also have a newer facility that I'll uh, get to eventually. Uh, it's about, I think, about five degrees today. You can see above me the uh, vents behind light traps, and you can see in the uh, one that the black flap is open, and on the uh, second vent there, the, it is not being pushed open by the fans pushing air through it. So that tells me that that uh, the building is in pretty comfortable sort of medium uh, temperature range. Uh, that uh, first fan comes on at about five degrees and the next one would come on at six degrees. I do also have these two smaller vents just behind me here uh, and one of those runs steady 24-7 and the second one will come on at four degrees. So each there's uh, multiple stages of ventilation. I also will use this, uh, this is my handy dandy Hitachi cordless tool light that comes with every tool that you could possibly buy from them uh, to make it look like they're giving you more value. Uh, we've covered the end of it with tuck tape to make the light red instead of white. That is less attractive to the bees. And uh, I'll flip the camera over and step inside and show you what we got. Okay, here we are inside the shed and you can see that I've got red LED light bulbs on the ceiling to provide very low light but somewhat adequate uh, lighting and uh, these right in front of me are actually the hives that I took out last week when the weather was warm and now I've put them all back inside again and here is the and I'll turn the light on so this is my my uh, flashlight with the red tape on it this is the guts of it and it's not very pretty but what we have uh, is that up there is our constant run fan uh, and it you can see how it's running through uh, an old uh, steam boiler style uh, heat uh, system and then my four degree fan is also uh, it's run through a heat recovery system and that's what all that orange tubing is about and that goes right into the floor and there's a circulator pump and that pump runs at the same time as the uh, four degree uh, fan will kick on. You can see they're both plugged into the same uh, circuit there. And so whenever it gets to four degrees, that system runs and then the concrete floor is heated to that minimum four degree temperature. Of course, those fans will continue to run if it gets warmer. These thermostats here, kick on so stage one kicks on at four degrees stage two at five degrees and stage three at six degrees and then those larger capacity fans are squirrel cage fans up in this in this uh, roof there and they will that and the, the stage uh, three fan that comes on at six degrees that's a real hummer there uh, it's two large capacity squirrel cage fans, both at fairly high rates of speed. So when that kicks in, I can change the air in this building about every five minutes. I also have a, uh, although it's not plugged in at the moment because I didn't want to set the alarm off while I was in here, a uh, heat, uh, an alarm system wired into the phone, and then also a thermostatic controller that connects to my solar panel. So I have another heating system uh, up there. There are solar panels on the roof and then a, a heat exchanger inside all that plumbing and then a, a pressure system for the solar panel. And so whenever the uh, temperature is warmer in the panel, that's what this little uh, box of uh, gizmos does, is it whenever the temperature inside the solar panel is warmer than it is in the floor, then that will run and add the heat off of that system to my floor system.
that uh, heat recovery system actually works maybe a little bit too well because um, I often have to uh, dial it back a bit here. I don't want the, the heating system to run too much in the winter time or we end up drying things out in here. Uh, ideal system would be for nearly all of the ventilation to come off of these two fans for most of the winter and for those large ones to kick in only when necessary. You can see that the, none of this is very pretty. I've wired up nearly all of this myself. Uh, a lot of the uh, controls are run straight off of the panel. And I've got my instructions to myself written on here uh, so I know what to do if, for instance, I have to fire up a generator, I know which uh, circuits to run on that and so on. Um, so, you know, this would not win uh, an electrical engineering beauty contest. And I basically built it up over time, right? So it, the original design was much more simple than what it's become. Anyway, that's, uh, you can see that even though it's, you know, it's uh, shirt sleeve weather outside, the bees in here are relatively calm. Uh, that one's a little poopy. You see the bees there, they're getting a little crawly. There's a couple crawling on the outside. Uh, and it's about four in the afternoon, so if they were to get excited, now would be the time. And just this little bit of extra light is making them fly at me a little bit. But uh, we're just about at the end of winter and the bees are pretty content. So I feel like uh, this has worked pretty well. I hope that's some guide to, oh yeah, I should talk about the air intake. The air intake is behind uh, the rock and roll sign up there. Uh, we have usually a party in the barn here before the bees come in in the fall. And so that uh, upside down window awning is the light trap for my uh, air intake. Uh, and there's a vent to the attic of the adjoining building there. So that uh, makes it light uh, perfect. When, when everything's closed up, there should be no daylight in here at all. And then that up top fan, which I've turned off just to keep the, the noise in here a little more under control so you can hear me, uh, that helps distribute that air throughout the building rather than having that cold air come in and then immediately fall on top of the uh, first hives. So it's very important to distribute that uh, cold air intake throughout the building. And so that up top fan does that. I also have uh, fans uh, and these are just sort of, this is a fairly small squirrel cage fan which is in sucking air out of this corner and distributing it through the tube to the rest of the barn. And so this tube has a hole between each of the uh, places of the hives, there's one there, and uh, that'll just blow the air down between the rows so that all the bees have good access to good fresh air. So that's the facility I ran for about 20 years, and I still do. I'll do another video on the new setup uh, another day.